Hi everyone, Paul here. So uh, today I'll be sharing with you then the, my top learnings in terms of the 50 plus Salesforce projects that I went through. Okay, so but today we're going to go deeper. Okay, so this is the second part of this uh, video and post. Okay, so if you did miss out on the first one, I'll leave somewhere there the link to the LinkedIn uh, plus the video as well. So if you want to check that out. Okay, so Today, so I'm going to go deeper, even deeper on what were then my top learnings, let's say, from my 50 plus Salesforce projects across different uh, geographies. OK, so for those that do not know me, so my name is Paulo uh, and I've been working on Salesforce since 2012, mostly around Martin Cloud and Pardot. Sales Cloud, Service Cloud. But outside of that as well, I've been working on MuleSoft. I've been working on Experience Cloud and Heroku. Okay. Uh, and throughout these years, I've been working on several projects across APAC, EMEA, LATAM, North America, um, and also global projects. So with all of that, what is it that I've learned? Okay, so those were the things that I shared high level on part one. Okay, and today I'm going to go deeper into part two and just share with you my top, top knowledge or my top, top learnings, let's say, in a golden platter. Okay, so let's go. So um, starting from the very beginning. Okay, so why should you actually care? Okay, so if you're working on Salesforce or if even if you're working on uh, any kind of different CRM, you know that is highly costly. Okay, so there is a uh, time uh, implementation, there's uh, time for adoption, there are usage, um, but also on top of that, there is cost. Okay, so you can have projects of uh, 50K, you can have projects of 100K, you have projects of 1 million, you have projects of 50 million. I've worked in a very, very big project, so I cross uh, all of those types of different budgets, let's say. Okay, so, but going down into this one. So, what is then the biggest challenge? Okay, so the biggest challenge actually of not having a proper CRM uh, working and implemented is not the CRM per se. It's actually the competition, okay? Because if the competition actually has a proper CRM working, okay, that will completely blow your mind. And the reason for that is simple, because they will have a competitive advantage, okay? So you may ask, so, Paul, okay, that's all good, but what does that translate into? What are the advantages of having a CRM? So for those that are not so, uh, let's say, familiar with this, or even for those that are more familiar but want to go deeper, I'll be sharing with you So. CRM essentially allows for you to do loads of different things. I'm going to share with you roughly like 10, 11 top things. Okay, so first, so allows for you to improve sales and marketing efficiency because you can actually work with marketing cloud and service cloud combined. Okay, so uh, essentially uh, outside of that allows for you to have a 360 view of the customer because the customer does engage with you across marketing, across service, across sales, across integration. And if you have the CRM working as such, you can have different views on all the touch points of the customer because the customer can engage with you on your e-commerce, can engage with you on your store, etc. Okay. And that will allow to capture all of this view of the customer. Okay. So then increases productivity and collaboration because you're going to have access to solutions such as Slack that I integrated with, with Salesforce. Okay. Um, outside of that, better sales forecasting and performance analysis because Salesforce comes with reports and dashboards. And on top of that, you can actually put Tableau. Okay. If you have a better understanding of your forecast, a better understanding of your pipeline, you are one step closer of actually having success. Okay. Um, outside of that, um, allows for you to improve uh, customer service and support because it integrates everything with Service Cloud. Okay, then outside of that, more things uh, like, for instance, um, it allows for you to have greater visibility um, on what's happening across different accounts and therefore also reporting on those. It allows for uh, to have a complete integration because you have several clouds several solutions that integrate um, among themselves. And on top of that is a complete ecosystem, okay? Everything works in sync, okay? Then outside uh, of all of this, then the cherry on the top of the cake is, of course, automation, AI, 
and integrated everything in one single platform, uh, the customer success platform. Okay, so this is all the power that you have if you are actually able to implement CRM and actually being able to use CRM. If you don't, once more, your biggest challenge is not having the CRM properly implemented, implemented properly working is the competition. The competition will have that, okay? And if the competition has that, we'll have at least access to this 10 plus uh, advantages, let's say, or benefits of having a CRM, okay? So, then the next point is, what is the solution to all of this, okay? So the solution to all of this goes through having um, let's say a very strong implementation and outside of that being able of actually work. Okay. So for that, I'll be sharing with you what is my framework. Okay. The framework that will allow for you hopefully to be more successful. And this is what I've been learning outside of this 50 plus, uh, Salesforce projects. Okay. So starting with the very top. Okay. So the the beginning is around uh, planning, okay? If you don't plan, you plan to fail. So it's important for you to have a planning, um, establish a cross-functional team, define objectives, having the, the, a part of you review the product backlog. You go into the sprint planning. You do the sprint backlog, okay? Those are the type of, of action, let's say, that is highly, highly important for you to actually to have something that is actually working, okay? Outside of that, there is then the second step that you need to pay attention to. This is all about the development stage, okay? This is all about having the data uh, clean. This is all about the integration and the testing. This is a key uh, point within your framework of success, okay? Then the third step of this framework of success, sorry, will be around testing the release, okay? For this, there are some key points, okay? You should definitely have a demo with your stakeholders, okay? After having a demo with your stakeholders, a, a in-progress demo of what was built before, okay, it's important for you to have a very thorough testing part, okay? Then I would highly and strongly advise for you to actually to have a team demo as well, okay? Having more eyes looking at the solution that was built, okay? Then having, of course, a strong uh, regression testing, having a sprint demo, so a demo with the client, okay? Having a UAT user acceptance test, and last but not least, always, always having a UAT sign-off, okay? Sign-off by the client saying that, yeah, this is working as it should, okay? It's fundamental for your success. Then, I'd say that there are two more parts that I would say that are important as well as part of this framework. The, the following one has to do with enablement, okay? If you are building something, if you are building um, a new platform such as Martin Cloud, is for people to use. Okay, so it's important for you to actually to pay attention to this and spend time on user uh, adoption, training, uh, having proper uh, comms, etc. Okay. Last but not least, you want to make sure that you have a successful project. For that to happen, you need to showcase that you are having success. So for that, it's important for you not just to have project metrics. Okay. Uh, like, for instance, was it on time? Is it behind schedule? Uh, a CSAT review, so customer satisfaction review. But outside of that, making sure that you have pre-deployment tests that are done, post-deployment tests that are also working effectively, okay? This is fundamental. Then, on top of all of that, having uh, a retrospective, so lessons learned of the entire project, okay? So, to close, okay, what are my top learnings, okay? so. I would say that I have 10 top learnings, okay? So, and I'll give you also on top of that, um, meaning when more or less, uh, what is the percentage, let's say, of times that uh, people are not actually doing it, okay? So first, uh, executive sponsorship and steering, okay? 20% of the time, okay, those that actually implement uh, a project such as a CRM project don't even remember of that. So this is a deal breaker. If you don't have uh, sponsorship from the top, you are dead. Okay. If something goes wrong, you are completely uh, on your own. Okay. So then the other key point for me is have a clear visibility of business goals. Okay. Uh, I can say to you that 50% of the times, based on my experience. Um, it does not happen. So you start building without having a clear view of what is it that needs to be built to achieve uh, X amount of objectives, okay? Then, the third point uh, for me, um, that I'd say 80% of the times, okay, and this is a fact, does not happen, okay? 
I would say that you really need to talk to business. You need to understand the business. You need to sit down with the business. You need to breed business. Okay? And this is fundamental. So 80% of the time, it does, just does not happen. So consultants just go there, they start implementing something, but they don't even understand fully the business. Okay? This is really a problem. Okay? So then, I would say, 10% of the times as well, you have a real poor project management. Okay? This tends to happen mostly if you are doing it in-house. If you did miss out on the in-house, click on the video to check out the first part of this uh, series of videos, okay, so that you understand what is it that I mean by in-house. Okay? Then, uh, the other point that I would say that is important, lack of Salesforce expertise. Okay? I would go even further than that, domain knowledge. 40% okay? of the time, people that are implementing don't have that. Okay? They are just curious. Okay? They know Salesforce some, but they are not domain knowledge in, for instance, um, as I am, okay? in terms of, of um, everything that has to do with life science. Okay? Or they, they, they don't have the domain knowledge of marketing. They don't have the domain knowledge of sales. Okay? So it's important for you to actually to go and talk to people that actually have that. Okay? Then, uh, my sixth point, uh, my learning, is all about data quality and integration, okay? 90% of the time, data is an afterthought, okay? People think that they're going to be just pulling everything shiny, beautiful, okay? And the data will work by itself. They would load the data or whatever, okay? Integrate the data and data will work by itself. But if the data, the quality of the data is poor, if people cannot read, understand, make assumptions, take insights of what is it that is there, then the lack of adoption will start. People will start stopping using the system, okay? And that is crucial for you, and that is a pain, okay? It's a deal breaker, okay? So then, the other thing that happens, I would say, 40% of the times, there is scope creep, meaning, what does that mean? So, at the beginning of the project, you need, you remember the planning part, so you need to plan out, you need to define what is the sprint size, the scope of what is it that is going to be delivered, okay? Then there is the tendency of the business coming around and just trying to change things or the, the sponsor of the project. So you need to really to be strong on that approach. Okay? If you allow for the scope creep to happen, uh, then it's likely that you're not going to be delivered on time. Okay? Or if you do, you need to commit to certain things. What is it that is possible to deliver on that given time? What it will not be possible to deliver on that given time? Okay? Then, uh, another thing that is... This happens 80, 90% of the times, um, meaning people don't, the, the consultants, um, the implementation, whatever, the team does not involve users, okay? So they build things for someone, but they don't involve those people, okay? Which is a huge mistake, okay? Then I'd say the ninth uh, point has to do with change management and communication, okay? So uh, this is a given, but it happens 80% of the time. There is no time allocated to address change management. People are expecting that things will work, that people will not have resistance to change. Guess what, guys? They will, okay? And you should ha actually have time allocated to address change management. Then, last but not least, uh, my favorite topic as well, user adoption and training, okay? It connects to the previous one, meaning you need to have time not just to lobby, okay, to make sure that people actually understand why is it that you need to use change management, but outside of that, you need to actually to be focused on user adoption, having metrics of adoption, training, to make sure that you're going to have success, okay? With that said, those are my top learnings, okay? Hopefully, this was an interesting session. If you have any questions, uh, just feel free to reach out to me uh, or drop it on the comments below, okay? That's it. Take care, guys. Cheers. Bye-bye. Thank you.